Keith Rucker here at BenjaMachinery.org. I want to do a little follow-up video on the dividing head plates. Uh, we did a video uh, a week or so ago where we showed making the actual disc and uh, then going and getting the, I was going to send them off and have a buddy of mine actually drill the hole patterns in here on a CNC uh, uh, milling machine. And uh, anyway, I want to do a little follow-up video and kind of bring you up to speed where we're at and what we've got to do next to finish these out. So I sent my blanks over to Mike Wiggins. Uh, some of you guys may know Mike. He also has a YouTube channel, The Backyard Machine Shop, uh, where he puts some stuff up. But Mike is a uh, machinist, a shop foreman at a commercial machine shop, and they run a lot of CNC stuff over there. And uh, anyway, he uh, offered, uh, when I asked him about it, to program the these in and just go drill them out on a CNC mill. Now I got a lot of comments from you guys saying, hey, I'd really like to have seen you do it manually. And uh, I have actually, I've, I've said this before, I've done these before manually using a rotary table and it's quite time consuming. There's a lot goes on in there. And just to kind of, you know, tell you the advantages of CNC, Mike got these program. Uh, he did the number one and number three plates uh, first. Uh, he's going to do the other four. In fact, he's already got some of those done. But anyway, I've already got these two back from him. Uh, in fact, I was over near Savannah, Georgia, where he uh, works at over the weekend, stopped in and actually got to visit with him for a little while and see these uh, being, uh, or not see them being run, but uh, got them from him after he had already ran these two. But to give you an idea of the time involved, once he got it programmed on the mill, uh, the plate number three, the one that has the fewest number of holes in it, he said it took about seven minutes. Uh, to, to drill out all the holes. And uh, the number one plate, which has quite a few uh, more holes in it than the, the first, or the number three plate, said it took about 20 minutes to drill that one out. So it's extremely fast and basically uh, what he did, and, and Mike actually is going to post a video up on his uh, website talking about this job as well as showing the CNC equipment run this. And I'll put a link to that for you guys to, to go take a look at. Uh, but basically with the CNC, it just, uh, he goes, went in there on a, on a vise and actually milled out a circle uh, for, on some soft jaws, clamped the disc down, the disc down and uh, then it just basically just drove itself to every one of these holes and just drilled them. And of course, being on the CNC mill, it goes real quick and it's very easy to dial in those numbers. So anyway, let's zoom in here. I'm going to show you what we got. And we got a little problem. Uh, it was my fault, not his. And we're going to talk about how we're going to go about fixing that. So this is the number two plate. This is the one that I had and uh, what we were kind of copying uh, to make the number one and three here, and uh, as well as the other uh, more specialty plates that I'll be getting later on. Um, so when I was doing all my measuring on these things and uh, getting the everything drawn up and laid out or what have you, I made a mistake. And I'm not exactly 100% sure how I did it, uh, but I did it. And that was when I measured uh, the diameter of this hole pattern, uh, I missed it uh, by a little bit. So I, I told Mike that this, these, these three holes were on a, a two and a half inch uh, uh, diameter. And in reality, it's an inch and three eighths. Uh, so I was off just a little bit on that. Uh, and what, when I got the plates back, I went and was putting it on my dividing head over here and spun them around and realized they didn't line up. And then when I lay them on top of one another, uh, you can see that they're just, they're, they're not lined up. And so what I want to do is, is, is first off, it's, it's not a huge deal. Uh, you know, we, we haven't lost all the work. All I've got to do is, is drill three new holes in here on the proper hole pattern or on the proper diameter. Uh, it really does not matter uh, where these mounting holes are in relation to the index holes. So we'll just go ahead and, here and, and drill three more holes on the right uh, diameter and you guys will get to see me do it manually. So we can actually talk about how we would drill out these hole patterns uh, if we were doing them manually. Of course, it'll only be three holes versus, you know, anywhere from, I think, let's see, the this plate goes from 15 to 20 holes. This plate goes from 37 to 49 holes. Uh, some of the plates that Mike is doing me have over a hundred holes in the, in the circle around there. So, you know, a lot more divisions involved, but anyway, you can see it. But before I do that, uh, I do want to talk about, uh, properly measuring, um, a hole pattern like this. And, um, 
quite honestly, when I did it, I took some shortcuts and I didn't check behind myself, which I should have. And it's totally my fault. Uh, but I went back and I actually measured these as I really should have to begin with. And I want to share with you guys how to do that because I think it's important that sometimes you may run into a similar situation and need to know how to do this. You know, how do you measure uh, the, the, the circle uh, on a three hole pattern like this? You can get some measurements, but you know, you really need to have a hole right directly across from it to measure a diameter. And there is nothing right across from it. So I'm gonna go through the process of how I do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I've got some gauge pins here that are 5 sixteenths in diameter, and uh, that's the same size of the hole. And then this is a counterboard hole. I've got it flipped over where uh, the smaller diameter is up. Uh, you could do it on the other side. It really doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my pins in here like such. So I come in here with my dial calipers now. I'm going to measure across these, and when I do, what I'm getting is a... Uh, 269 thousandths across them. And I've, I've actually measured them. I, I measured all of them and went around there and did all three measurements. And I'm not going to do that right now, but trust me, it's 269 thousandths or two inches, uh, two inches, 369 thousandths. I wrote that down and that's the measurement across there. So now what we need to do is some good old fashioned math uh, to calculate what the, the distance is from the center of this hole to the center of the part. So let's draw this out and uh, we'll go through the process of calculating uh, the, what we need. So I've got a three hole pattern and we'll draw it out like such. I know that these uh, pins are 5 sixteenths inch, which is so 16, not a 6, equals 0 0.3125 inches. Okay. I know that when I measure across these, this measurement is 2.369 inches, okay? So what I'm going to do is we're going to treat this like a, a triangle. I'm going to put a little X in the, the center of those holes, and we're going to draw a triangle, okay? Each one of these, this is a 60 degrees on all of your angles here. They're the same. And uh, so the first thing I want to do is uh, instead of going from the outside of the pins, I'm, I'm going to work off of the centers of the pins. So what I need to do is I need to subtract the diameter of the pin, the 5 16 inch from this number. And uh, when you do that, you come up with uh, 2.0565 inches from center to center. And again, I know the pins are 5 sixteenths. I got a half on this side and a half on this side, so I need to subtract twice the half or just the whole number there. And that's what I come up with. So what I'm after is the center here. So I'm really, what I'm needing to know is the radius from this center down there. And I don't have a good way of doing that, but we can draw some more triangles here and use some geometry to figure this out. So. Now I've got two triangles in here. Uh, they're right triangles now, which makes the math a little bit easier. Uh, I know that this uh, leg here is going to be half of this number, which is a 1.02825. I know that this angle is 30 degrees right here. I know this angle is 90 degrees and this angle up here will be 60 degrees. Uh, we know that because we can add them up the angles and they're going to be 180 degrees or 180 for the total of your three angles. So now it just becomes simple uh, trigonometry. And if you go back to your high school, remember when you said, well, I don't have to learn this trigonometry. I'm never going to use this. Well, guess what? We're going to use it. So uh, I know from going back and looking in my old trigonometry book, uh, because I don't remember this formula, uh, I probably should, but I don't, that uh, to solve for this, what we want to do is we want to solve for the hypotenuse. I'm going to call it X here, okay? We want to solve for the hypotenuse, and uh, the hypotenuse, uh, the, the formula for that, HYP, the hypotenuse, equals X, okay? We're going to call it X. It's going to be the adjacent over um, 
the cosine of the angle. Okay, so we're going to work off this angle down here. So x, we're going to put in the adjacent is going to be not the hypotenuse, but the other angle. So it's going to be 1.02825 over the cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, so now we got algebra. We went from trigonometry to algebra. So the first thing we need to do is calculate what the cosine of 30 degrees is. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. So the first way we can do this is we can use good old fashioned uh, trigonometry tables. This is when the, the way it would have been done many years ago uh, before computers and scientific calculators. And if you look inside your machinery's handbook, uh, you got all these uh, tables are all right up in the book where you can look it up. So I've gone to my mathematical tables, uh, the natural trigonomic functions. I've gone to 30 degrees, uh, which is what I'm working on here. Uh, you know, it's zero minutes, it's an actual 30 degrees. You know, we got 60 minutes in that 30 degrees and you can look it up for any of those minutes, but we're gonna look up zero. The cosine of that is 0 0.86603. So another way you can do this is to use your scientific calculator if you have one that has the trigonomic functions built into it. So to do that, uh, cosine of 30 degrees, we'll put in 30. I'll hit the cosine button and look at there. It's actually going to take it out to a lot more significant digits, but it's the same number we came up with, uh, 0 0.8660, and they rounded up the 25 to 3. So we're just going to go with that same number we have there uh, right out of the table. So we're going to use the 0 0.86603. So now, uh, again, using my scientific calculator, uh, I'm going to do the, do the math. So I'm going to take the, the top number there, 1.02. 825 and we'll divide it by the cosine of 30 degrees which is 0 0.86603 and what does that come up with so x equals 1.1873 and that's in thousandths of an inch uh, so you got it down to three ten thousandths and when I look at that number uh, again, being familiar with my decimal equivalents, I know. So another way you can do this is to use your scientific calculator if you have one that has the trigonomic functions built into it. So to do that, uh, cosine of 30 degrees, we'll put in 30. I'll hit the cosine button and look at there. It's actually going to take it out to a lot more significant digits, but it's the same number we came up with, uh, 0 0.8660, and they rounded up the 25 to 3. So we're just going to go with that same number we have there uh, right out of the table. So we're going to use the 0 0.86603. So now, uh, again, using my scientific calculator, uh, I'm going to do the, do the math. So I'm going to take the, the top number there, 1.02. 825 and we'll divide it by the cosine of 30 degrees which is 0 0.86603 and what does that come up with so x equals 1.1873 and that's in thousandths of an inch uh, so you got it down to three ten thousandths now, when I look at that number, knowing my decimal equivalents, I know that uh, 3 sixteenths inch equals 0.1875. So, you know, we're off by two tenths of a thousandths from being in a nominal uh, measurement. Um, I'm sure that, you know, just in the air involved in this, that, that number is supposed to be 3 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, so, Basically, what we're looking at is a measurement of 1.1875. So that tells us, go back up here to our chart, the hypotenuse here, that tells us the radius from here to the circle. If I want to know the diameter, I need to uh, uh, double that. So 1.1875 times 2 equals... 2.375 inches, which is 2 and 3 eighths inches. So there you go. A quick uh, refresher course in uh, trigonometry and algebra. I had
told uh, Mike that the diameter was two and a half inches. It was actually two and three eighths. So I was off a little bit and uh, that messed me up. So game plan now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this back out to the machine shop again. And uh, like I've already mentioned, we're going to re-drill the three holes in here. And uh, hey, we'll call this a feature. This, uh, this instead of being a mess up, we'll tell everybody this is a feature. These, these dividing plates can be used on two different bolt patterns. How about that? Uh, they're very special. <laughs> That's what I'm going to keep telling myself. But we'll re-drill these out on the right hole pattern, and uh, then we'll counter-bore them like we, uh, we're going to do these holes. And uh, everything should be good to go. Like I said, we can completely salvage the situation. Uh, but it is a little frustrating to uh, have made a... Uh, had a bozo moment and uh, made a mistake like that, but hey, it happens to the best of us, and uh, at least I can salvage these. I'm not going to have to start over. Uh, so when we get out to the machine shop, because you guys had so many questions on how would you do this manually, I think what I'm going to do is uh, take a little bit extra time, and I'm going to show you two different ways uh, to put that whole pattern in there. Uh, one way is, is like the way I made my dividing plate many years ago, is uh, setting this up on a rotary table and uh, basically finding the center of the part. We'll move out that ra uh, radius the proper way out and then use a rotary table to dial in the angles, uh, the, uh, the angle 60 degrees between each one of these and drill the holes out. And the second way is, again, we're going to put it in. Uh, the vise on the middle of the machine or something to hold it. I uh, may just clamp it down the table, don't know yet. Uh, again, we'll find the center. And uh, I'm going to use my digital readout, which actually has a bolt hole function built into it that will drive me to the individual coordinates uh, to drill these holes. So the first method I think I'm going to show you guys is using the rotary table uh, to drill out this hole pattern. And uh, first thing I got to do is I got to get my rotary table set up with the center of the uh, table is in line with the center of the, the quill on here so I can zero that out on my digital readout. And so what I've done is I've got an indicator on here that I can sweep around the outside of here. And I've already got this uh, centered up so everything is pretty much running on zero. There's a little bit of a, you know, movement as I'm going around but that's about as good as I can get it centered up and uh, it's, it's, I would say it's easily within a thousandth uh, on the zeros, so I'm happy with that. And uh, again, another opportunity to use an indicator, this is a little test indicator uh, that I've got set up to sweep around this. And uh, it is set up on zero, zero, and uh, I have got my digital readout zeroed out. So now I've got my uh, index plate set up on the dividing head, and uh, or on the rotary table, excuse me. And uh, I put some one, two, three blocks up underneath it to just kind of get it up off so that my drill bit has clearance uh, and I'm not going to drill into my, my table. And then uh, again, using the indicator, I've gone around here and got this running true. The, the rotary table is already centered. Uh, now when I come in here, uh, everywhere on here I touch, I'm going to zero all the way around. And uh, you can't see it around the rest of the way, but I have test it all the way around. So now uh, when I rotate this, that is running perfectly true. So um, we should be ready to go now and uh, go ahead and start drilling out our holes. Rotary table is centered on the, or was centered on the center of the uh, drill here. And then this uh, plate was again centered on there. So everything is rotating, everything is uh, within a couple of thousandths anyway, probably a thousandth and a half, uh, checking everything. And that was turning the table, checking all different angles, uh, which I'm happy with. Uh, so what I've done now is I've actually moved the, the, the drill, the center of the chuck, over uh, the distance I want to put my new hole pattern. So the old one, old one was uh, two and a half inches. This one needs to be uh, two and three eighths inch. So I move it over half of that, uh, which will be uh, one and uh, three sixteenths or 1.1875. And uh, so I've got this centered up on the new uh, hole or distance over here and uh, on, on the, using my digital readout. Um, of course, my, as I think I've mentioned before, my digital readout only reads, that, that the tenths only reads in uh, even numbers. So I just went with uh, 1874. So I'm a 
you know, that's just the resolution. It's two ten thousandths, so uh, that's close enough for what I'm doing. So now I've got a center drill in here. I'm going to uh, drill, uh, center drill it. We'll drill it. Uh, I've got on my rotary table uh, my angles. I actually went through here and marked them all so I can easily go back to them. You know, if I were doing all these individual holes, what I'd have me is a list of all the different angles I needed to dial to, and I'd have to go to each one of those, uh, spinning it around and uh, drilling. So on this one, we're 120 degrees apart. Uh, so again, I would just take 360 divided by however many divisions I have, and that's how many degrees I would have to turn the table uh, for each of the holes. So let's do this one. Good enough for spot. Now I've got a 5 16 drill bit, which is the size hole we need through there. And we'll drill it. Go ahead and change drill bits or put my center drill back in. And we'll go to the next angle. And again, I've already uh, marked my rotary table. Of course, I zipped right past it. Uh, but that's the angle right there. So now we'll go ahead and drill this one. All right, that's got that done. And uh, you can see, you know, if I were doing the uh, small holes, it would be the exact same procedure. But again, I would have to dial in all those angles. It's very time consuming, uh, it's very tedious, and you have to be very careful that you don't miss one. Uh, when I did this before, many years ago, I actually had a list and I had every angle uh, on my list on here that I would uh, dial to and then I'd check it, double check and actually had someone else check it behind me because you just couldn't be off. So anyway, that's one way of putting a hole pattern in. Um, you know, the, the drilling part here went fairly quickly. Truth of the matter is the setup took a really long time. You guys just saw a few seconds of it, uh, but I probably spent over an hour getting the um, rotary table centered and then getting the disc centered on here and every time you flop, swap a disc out you got to get it recentered. If I were doing a bunch of these I could build a little jig that it would just set down on top of uh, but for a one-off job this is very tedious and time consuming. Alright so I'm setting up for the second plate now and again I'm going to use a different method this time just to kind of show you a different way of getting the same job done. Uh, very often I talk about there's more than one way to skin a cat and I'm going to show you two different ways and there's probably even more ways that you could do this. This is two ways that I'm set up uh, in my shop to drill these uh, bolt hole patterns and the second method is going to be using the bolt hole function on my digital readout. And so the first thing I need to do is in this way I'm, I've taken it off the rotary plate, I've just bolted it down to the table. Again I got it up on some one, two, three blocks just to give me some clearance. But the first thing I need to do is get my spindle centered up on the center of this uh, part. And uh, I could use the indicator like I used before, but again, I'm going to show you another little trick. And this is what's called a, a coaxial indicator. So the way the coaxial indicator works is you have this little probe in here, and uh, as it moves in and out, you can see on the indicator face uh, it moving around. Now one thing that I will caution you is, is that uh, even though we've got a scale on here, this is not necessarily measuring in any particular increment. Uh, 
it's it really depends on the angle and the length of this rod that comes out and depending on that uh, it's it's it can it can be a different as far as moving your table so many thousands to clean it up so in this situation this indicator is going to give you a relative amount of run out uh, in something uh, by using that dial so basically what you want to do is turn this thing on and when you do you see the uh, dial down there is to spin around, you can hold this and you want it running zero. Uh, right now it's running zero. But as that thing starts hitting, it's going to bounce around. So what I'm going to do now, let's uh, go ahead and we'll drop this down into the, the hole we want to measure. There we go. And we'll turn the mill back on. And uh, you can see it's uh, bouncing around. So now what I'm going to do is just adjust my tables and uh, get it to where it's, we take as much of the air out as we can. So uh, you have to watch it. You, when you move your table, you're going to see the needles either getting closer together, all right, or getting farther apart. And I'll run out as less. Once you get to a certain point, uh, the run out will increase. And you just want to get it down to where you're getting the minimum amount of run out on an axis. And you can go fine tune it in a minute. And then go to the other axis and do the same thing. Just roll it around until you. Get it running zero. There we go. Now we're getting in there a little bit better. Smaller amount of run out. Let me go to this axis. I right, went just a little bit too far. Let me fine tune this axis. Wrong way. getting real close right here. Alright, that's just barely bouncing around. I'm going to call that good and uh, what we'll do is we'll dig re center out the digital readout. So back on the digital readout, uh, we're just going to uh, zero out those two, the X and Y axis. So now the uh, mill is set up on the center. So now that we've got the center identified in this uh, part, I've got my center drill in here. And again, we're going to go to the digital readout. And what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to put in a three bolt hole circle and it's just going to drive us to the coordinates using the digital readout. So over on the digital readout, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by hitting uh, the bolt hole circle button right there. I'm going to say enter uh, and it's going to ask me for my zero zero coordinates. Now if, I, if my coordinates are, are numbers, I can type them in. In this case, it's on zero zero. So I'm just going to hit enter for the Y axis. I'm going to hit enter for the uh, x-axis. It's going to ask me what my radius is. Uh, my radius, again, we're going for two and three-eighths uh, diameter, so it'll be half of that, which is 1.1875. So I'm going to type that in. 1.1875. Just double check that. That looks good. Hit enter. All right, now the next question it's going to ask me is the uh, starting angle. And if I look over on my part, the way I've got this out is it's basically, it would normally start with my first hole would be right here. I want my first hole to be up here at 90 degrees. So I'm going to put in 90 degrees as my first angle. 
And then it's going to ask me for the number of holes. And this is a three bolt hole pattern, so I'll put in three. And what you see next is the coordinates of where I need to go to uh, for my first hole. So I need to move my y axis over an inch and uh, 3 sixteenths. So we'll loosen up our table and we're just going to take that to zero. It's going to basically for each hole, it's going to steer you to where you want to set your table to zero, zero. It starts beeping when you get close. All right. So we're ready to drill our first hole. I got my center drill in. Just kind of come down. That looks exactly right on. Put my drill bit in. So now I'm going to hit the right air button and that will take me to my next coordinate. So we'll start by taking this one to zero. Right there and then bring my other axis to zero. Hopefully I'm not in the way. All right, and that looks right on where I need to be for my next hole. I'm gonna center drill it first. Put a little dimple in there to make sure we're in the right spot. That's it. Uh, we'll just clear out and that'll actually show us the actual coordinates that we're at. But our uh, bolt hole pattern is done. So this method that uh, I used using the digital readout is basically uh, the same method that the CNC mill used. It, it basically you, you, you start with the center of the part. It calculates the coordinates for each one of the holes in here. But instead of you having to manually drive to each one of those coordinates on the CNC mill, the servos and the computer is going to do it, and it's going to do it very accurately and very quickly uh, uh, to get the same job done. But we've got uh, the bolt holes drilled here now. So we should be ready to counterbore these. I've got my uh, counterboring tool, which basically has a pilot on the bottom and a flat bottom, the larger diameter, that will allow this uh, bolt to go down through there and uh, stop. So I've got it set up. I've got a, a, a depth marked over here on my scale where I can go down. I put a little stop over here just to uh, give me something as this thing is rotating just to kind of hold it in place. And uh, we're going to cut them. I'm going to slow that down a good bit. I like to run my counterboards a little on the slow side just so it doesn't burn them up. And uh, we'll lube that up. And come in here and get it done. The run out is that it's not really run out, it's just the uh, the tool it's the cutter itself is it's floating a little bit. But we're just gonna let it go down.
All right, according to my mark, that should be it. And um, just verify, drop the screw down in there. And actually, I think I want to go just a little bit deeper. It's not quite deep enough. I just need to give it enough clearance for that bolt to clear. what that looks like. All right, that looks good. I've uh, marked on here the with a little Sharpie pen the uh, holes that, that need the, the counter bore. And uh, we'll just continue doing this on the other one until we get them done. So I've got the uh, new dividing plate installed on the dividing head now. Everything appears to be looking good. Uh, it uh, goes into the holes like it's supposed to. Um, of course, you can see it turning over there. So uh, this should be ready uh, for our dividing job. So now I just need to get a day I can come in here and uh, get that done. And we're going to be doing a gear repair uh, for a fellow YouTube viewer. So. So that'll be a wrap on another project. Uh, got our, at least two of the dividing plates all finished up here. Uh, Mike is going to be getting me the other four. And then with these two, I have the main ones I need. Uh, the other four are kind of oddball sizes, but hey, I figure as long as I'm making them, I'll go ahead and get the whole set. So uh, thanks to my little bozo moment, uh, we had to make some lemonade out of lemons. Uh, but in the end, it's not going to matter. Um, you know, we got a couple extra holes. They don't hurt anything other than maybe the appearance a little bit, but they're fully functional and uh, we're ready to go now. So um, that'll be it. Thanks for watching. We'll come back with a dividing head job and a gear repair job coming up soon using this uh, K&T dividing head.